Hello. Welcome back, friends. And everybody out there in uh, the VC and the YouTube land, all the subscribers. And uh, don't forget, if this is your first time, or if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe and click the little uh, bell icon to get your notifications so you don't miss out on any of the videos. First up, Dire Straits, Brothers in Arms. This is a reissue from a few years back. And now, this is a 180 gram half speed mastered by Stan Ricker, plated and pressed at RTI. Now, Stan Ricker, he was one of the few people that could actually do half speed mastering because it's really hard to do. And you really, a lot of times, the biggest problem with half speed mastering is not so much on the high end, but it's on the bottom end. Because when you're doing half speed now, uh, a lot of, uh, they don't like, doesn't like going down to the bottom octaves, going down lower than you're supposed to, because you're doing it at half speed, so all your frequencies are lower. It's nice when you're doing the high frequencies, because you don't have to record them at, say, 15,000 hertz. It's only, you know, at the 18, say if it's at 18,000, now you're at 9,000. You're just recording it at 9, because when you speed it up, it's going to 18. So, but if you're going to record, it's say uh, a 20 hertz signal, or it's even say a 15, uh, a 30 hertz signal. If you're going to record record 30, it's going down to 15 now. Those those tape cutting heads, they don't, I mean, uh, the, the the lacquer cutting on the lathe, the, the cutting heads, they don't like going at 15 cycles. It's really hard to do. But Stan, he was the master of this, and he could really, he was one of the few ones that could do half-speed mastering, do it well. And so this is a double LP that came out a few years ago. And uh, it's half-speed mastered. And uh, this is the kind of record, you know, when you put it on and you listen to it, you go, wow, that's what I'm talking about. That's what half-speed mastering is all about here. And here's your inner sleeve. And then they have this little insert. Uh, it's just a little bit about the uh, Brothers in Arms, kind of about the band. But, uh, okay, so here's the deal now with this record. You can see behind it, there's another one. And that's the MoFi, the new MoFi, that's at 2LP, 45 RPM. And I have had other folks tell me that that one is better than this one. You know, because I, I can attest to the fact that I have heard what these... 45 RPM records can do as opposed to a half speed mastered record. Now this one came out after that Stan record, Stan Ricker one. And uh, it's a limited edition. This is 11,000. I'm not sure how many they made of these things. But uh, it's still sealed. I haven't opened it up yet. And that brings me to another little topic and that's about why I haven't even opened this up yet. Because, um, of course, this is for a future video that I'm going to do a comparison, obviously. I'm going to compare these two. Even though I pretty well know which, which one's better, I'm going to do a lot of critical listening, and I'm going to listen to it, and I'm going to tell you what the differences are, what I can hear different between one and the other, and why this is supposedly better. We'll find out if it is. But the reason I haven't opened it up yet is because now that I've got my new music room and the way I had the old music room, the, the stand that I had everything on was a lot wider. And I wasn't able to get my speakers as close together as I would like. So now that I have my new equipment rack, I can get the speakers a little closer together. 
I can get him a little further from the wall. And uh, thanks to some folks, some of my subscribers that pointed out a few things on my room tour video, I did a lot more checking on to the Martin Logan, how to set those up versus, you know, just setting up a regular speaker. What are, what are the criteria? More Martin Logan, what do they recommend? And I've got my speaker set up better than I did at the other, my other listening room. And I'm hearing more music. I'm hearing more detail. And what I'm also hearing, I'm hearing more mistracking. So I've had my cartridge now. I've had that cartridge for 15 years. So it's time for a retip. Yeah, it's long overdue for a retip, but I'm really, really hearing it now. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the micro ridge with the boron cantilever. It's quite expensive for a retip, but that is supposed to take that 501 even past the 901, even to into a better, way better sounding cartridge. Going to be able to get more, extract more details off the record. And we'll see how that is. I mean, uh, I talked to a gentleman about it and he is going, you know, it's going to be, you're going to get more information. You're just going to be a better upgrade than buying a $100,000 amp. So he's trying to talk me into to getting a more expensive upgrade. But, you know, sounds great to me. So we're going to try that. And when I get all that done, then I'm going to start reviewing some of these records. And then I'll really be able to, because, you know, when you get those transients at high, high frequency, that's where you notice that you're going to have, have the, notice the most mistracking. Not on the lower, not in the mid-range, but it's the real high-end stuff and the transients and the attack on all that stuff. That's what you notice more. That's where you hear semblance is one of the indicators of that. Okay, now here is, this is a 180 gram autofile, plated and pressed at Palace, Germany, mastered by Bernie Grunman from the original analog tape, because sound matters. Okay, so this one was pressed in Palace and remastered by Bernie Grunman. So, uh, how do you all think this record sounds? And they just put it on that Warner Brother label, the white Warner Brother label. Yeah, take a guess, folks. Yeah, it's unbelievable how great this record sounds. They just, Bernie did a great, great job at, at remastering this record. And, um, I don't see the year it was remastered. It just says 78 there. And that's when the record came out originally. So it doesn't have a year that it was remastered. But yeah, everybody loves this record. It's a great record. So if you can get the one that was remastered by Bernie Grumman and prayed and pressed in Palace from probably 2010 or something like that, great record. Now they've redone this record too. And you know, I did have one that was from, it was redone here about 2010, 2011. And it was pressed in Palace, Germany. And it was, of course, it wasn't remastered by Bernie Grandma now. Somebody else had remastered it. And I bought it and because I had had that other one. And I bought this one. And I compared it to my original. This is just my original Canadian pressing. That's all that looks. Canadian, original Canadian press. This one was better than that Palace Germany one. But now it's been reissued again. And I think it's Half Speed Master or something like that. Anyway, I've got it on, I've got it saved. I think on uh, Music Director, one of them sites. So it's on the list. I want to get, I want to get the nether, the newer reissue of this and to see how that is. If it's been reissued from the mat, from the original tape and it's done properly, it's going to be better. But it's a, an example there where just because it's pressed in Palace, Germany or whatever, doesn't mean it's going to be a great sounding record. It matters who masters it, as we know. Okay, here's another Dire Straits record. This is uh, on every street. And this is a UK import that I've got. 
the Dire Straits. That's my Dire Straits records. If I want to listen to Dire Straits, I got some records. And I got those are the ones I like to listen to. Now we're going to go to Deep Purple, and this is Machine Head, and this is a Rhino, one of the earlier Rhinos, that was mastered by Kevin Gray at Acoustic Mastering, and it. Uh, Pressed at RTI. Now it doesn't have the RTI sticker, but this is one of those ones that it, we we know are great. And it's got the nice thick cover. It's a gatefold, and it's got the poster that came in the record. Got the poster. The original record came with the poster. You know how Rhino was back in the day. They were very meticulous on how they uh, did these records. And look, they put it on the Green Wonder Brother label. That's the original label that this record came on. And I have had the original Japanese press. I've had a course when I first bought this. I didn't get the original Japanese press. But the second time I bought it, I, I realized what I, mistake I'd made. I got the original Japan press. And this RTI pressed, remastered by Kevin Gray at RTI, is phenomenal much better than that Japanese press. And of course it destroyed any domestic pressing that I ever had. Just a great one of those records that was made in those years. They were already years before the big record companies wanted to make records. Right from the master analog tape. Great record. Now we have who do we think we are? And this is a original Japanese press, 2,000 yen, and again it's on the, the Green Wonder Brother label from I think 72 Japanese lyric sheets, and um, yeah, you can really tell, this is one of those records that you can really tell when it's an original Japan press, how good it sounds compared to a reissue. Great, great sounding record right here. Deep purple. Next is Fireball. And then this is also a Japan first edition. The Japan lyric sheet. Here's the back cover. There's the gatefold opened up. And again, it's on the Green Warner Brother label. It's a Japan original. Sounds fantastic. And it's got the big thick covers. And inside here, Warner Brother Pioneer Corporation Tokyo. And it's got 2,000 yen on it. So you know it's, a, it's another indicator of the year it was made, 72-2000.